طيب بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Continuing with the uh, book of Janais, the book of funerals from Zad al Mustaqni' of Imam al Hajawi رحمه الله تعالى. We are today at the point where he is talking about visiting the graves and issues which are permitted therein and issues which are forbidden therein. So he says in his first opening statement, قوله تسنو زيارة القبور It's sunnah that a person visits the graves. And what he means here is that it's sunnah that a person visits the graves. The reason or the ziyara, the visiting which is permissible, is that visiting which is done in order to benefit the dead and in order to benefit the living. We'll come back to that in a minute. The impermissible ziyara is that which is done in a shirki way or in a bid'i way. For example, a person goes to a grave thinking that it's permissible for him there to call upon the dead in that grave. So this is shirk. Or a person goes to the grave and he thinks that this grave is blessed. It's a blessed place and doing acts of worship here are blessed and more rewarded. So this is bid'ah, which can lead to shirk. So these are objectives which are not permitted, not legislated by the sharia. And the permissible ziyara is that which is beneficial to the dead as well as being beneficial to the living. Whereupon the Muslim goes to the graveyard or to the grave to make dua for the dead in the legislated way and to seek forgiveness for the dead in the legislated way. So he ends up benefiting the dead and benefits himself by gaining the reward. And we shouldn't forget that this is the actual maqsad al azim This is the great and core objective for visiting the graves which is to remind oneself of the Akhirah and to remind oneself that soon I will be in the place that this person is in who I'm making dua for and I'm making istighfar for. So now I'm making dua for this person, now I'm seeking forgiveness for this person, but soon I'm going to be in this place. That is the real objective for visiting the graves. As the Prophet wasallam said in Sahih Muslim in the hadith of Abu Hurairah anhu, where he said, فَزُورُوا الْقَبُورِ فَإِنَّهَا تُذَكِّرُ الْمَوْتِ Go and visit the graves, for verily they remind you of death. So this is the great objective and the great maqsad, the great purpose behind visiting the graves. To make dua for the dead in a permissible way, to seek forgiveness for them, and to remind yourself that soon you are going to be in the place of this person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all a good end. Ameen. The Prophet ﷺ said elsewhere, also alluding to this fact, he said, كُنْتُ نَحَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ زِيَارَةِ الْقُبُورِ فَزُورُوهَا فَإِنَّهَا تُذَكِّرُ الْآخِرَةِ He said, I used to forbid you from visiting the graves. Yani in the early times of Islam, when shirk was still spread, widely spread, the Prophet ﷺ would forbid, for, forbid the companions from visiting the graves. Later on, the Prophet ﷺ said, زُورُوهَا Go ahead and visit the graves. For verily, they will remind you of the Akhirah. They will remind you of the hereafter. Okay? So it's important to remember why we visit the graves. We visit the graves to remind ourselves of the hereafter, to remind ourselves of death, and to seek forgiveness for those that are in the graves in the legislated way and to make dua for them. A mas'ala to mention, a point to mention, that it's allowed to visit the grave of a non-Muslim, but of course this cannot be done uh, with dua, and it cannot be done with salam or making istighfar for this person. In Sahih Muslim, it's narrated that the Prophet وسلم, in the hadith of Abu Hurairah, Zara al Nabi وسلم, Qabra Ummihi, Fabaka wa Abka man hawlahu. The Prophet وسلم, he visited the grave of his mother who passed away, who died whilst a non Muslim. So he cried when he was there and he made, due to his crying, all those that loved him from the companions around him also started crying. And then he said, Ista'adhantu Rabbi fi an astaghfira laha. Ista'adhantu Rabbi fi an astaghfir laha. I sought permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that I could seek forgiveness for my mother. Falam yu'dhan li, but it wasn't given to me. Fasta'adhantu Rabbi fi an azuraha. So then I sought permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I be able to visit her, I mean visit the grave. Fa'udhina li. And then it was given me permission. فَزُورُ الْقُبُورِ فَإِنَّهَا تُذَكِّرُ الْمَوْتِ So verily go ahead, the Prophet ﷺ said, and visit the graves, for verily they remind you of death. So in this hadith clearly it's shown that the Prophet ﷺ visited and was permitted to visit 
the grave of his mother who passed away as a non-Muslim. So based upon this, it's allowed to visit the grave of a relative or somebody who was close to you who died as a non-Muslim to remind you of death and to uh, remind you of the situation that comes to every human being sooner than later. Uh, one of the issues pertaining to the etiquettes of visiting the grave, as mentioned by Sheikh Hamad al Hamad in Zad al Mustaqna, his explanation, he said that when you visit the uh, dead person in the grave, that like you do when the person is alive, you are face to face with this person. Likewise, in the grave, when you're visiting, you should also stand at the point where his head is going to be. So you look directly to where you imagine the face of the person is going to be when you are making dua for that person and you are making istighfar for that person. Okay? So he said, He said, this is what the people of knowledge have been upon uh, for a long time. The author, he says, after mentioning that it's, per, it's sunnah to visit the graves of the dead, the, the author, he said, may Allah have mercy upon him, illa nisa, except for women. So here the author is negating the legislation of the women to go ahead and visit the graves. Here he's not legislating it completely. What he's negating is the sunniyah, is that the fact that it's not sunnah for the women to go ahead and to visit the graves. Rather, the opinion of the author and the opinion of the madhab that it's makru that it's disliked, okay? And a question to yourselves, uh, what is the proof from a hadith that was mentioned in last week's lesson to show that visiting the grave for women is something which is makru, something which is disliked? What is the proof from the hadith mentioned last week to show that visiting the grave is disliked, makru? Tayyib, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, in the hadith in Bukhari Muslim, the hadith of Umm Atiyah, where she said, Nuhina and Tiba al Janais. She said, Radiallahu anha, we were forbidden from following the, the, the funeral procession. However, that wasn't made something severe upon us, meaning that in her estimation, it wasn't haram, rather, it was makru. So, the evidence from this hadith to show that visiting the graveyards uh, for the women is makru is because. Following the janazah, following the funeral procession is a wasila, is a means to end up visiting the grave. Therefore, if the act of following the procession is makru, then of course the act of visiting the grave is going to be makru also. There's a mas'ala here that we need to mention. Uh, Imam Tirmidhi, he mentions in the hadith that Ibn Abbas anhu said that the Prophet وسلم, said, La'ana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam za'iratul qubur that the Prophet ﷺ cursed those women who would frequently visit the graves and those who would build upon the graves and those who would decorate the graves with candles and other such decoration. So here the Prophet ﷺ cursed the women that visited the graves. So the question to yourselves, what is the mas'ala? What is the issue here? in the context of what I've just been discussing. What is the issue that I need to clarify for you and for myself in the context of the issue that I'm discussing with you? So we find that we said that for the women to visit the graves is makru. However, here we have clearly mentioned in the hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, said that the women that visit the graves are cursed. And if a person is cursed, then how can it only be makru? So this is something which should come to our minds. That if a person, a woman is cursed for visiting the grave, then how can it only be makru? Well, the ulama, those who hold this opinion that it's makru, they have an explanation for this. They said, in a hadith al-nahi and ziyara kana khas bin nisa. That the hadith which were speaking about the prohibition of visiting the graves was specific to the women. وَالْإِذْنْ جَاءَ عَامًا لِلْرِجَالِ وَالنِسَاء And later on, the permission came in a general way for both men and women to visit the grave. Women asli wujud al ihtimal and due to the presence of a possibility, wa huwa an al idhn khasan bil rijal faqat, and that possibility is that the permission to visit the grave is for men only, awli ihtimal an al nahi an ziyat al nisa li qubur, jaa mutaakhiran al in idhn, or the possibility that the permission or the possibility that the forbiddance for the women to visit the graves came after the permission. فَتَكُونُ الْمَسْأَلَةَ So then the issue قَدَّارَتْ بَيْنَ الْجَوَازِ وَالتَّحْرِيمِ is now revolving around being permitted to go to the graves and being forbidden from going to the graves. وَمَا كَانَ كَذَلِكَ فَأَقَلَّ أَحْوَالِهِ الْكِرَاهَةِ And any issue which is like this, 
okay, that there is a possibility that there's permission and there is possibility that there's forbiddance, okay, in the issue, then the least situation here is that it's going to be kiraha, that it's going to be makru. So this is one of the ways of understanding, even though we have the hadith of Ibn Abbas, which said that there is uh, la'an, there is curse for the women who visit the grave, even with that, then it's still very possible to hold the opinion that it's makru based upon the explanation that I just gave you, which was taken from some of the ulama, like Sheikh Sami ibn Abdurrahman and Sheikh Fahad al-Matiri in their explanations. Uh, ibn Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala from the imams of the madhab, the humble madhab, he held it forbidden, completely haram, not makru. He held it that it was completely haram uh, to visit the graves. And he also, one of his evidences was the same hadith that I mentioned to you of Umm Atiyah, proving that it was makru. He held that actually this hadith proves that it was haram. Why? Because he said when Umm Atiyah said, Lam yu'zam alayna, it wasn't made severe upon us. He said this was an ishtihad. This was a striving of understanding from Umm Atiyah radiallahu anha. However, it was understood that the forbiddance was general upon the women from visiting the graves. In any case, Imam Ibn Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala, he held that it's forbidden for the women to visit the graves. The author now is going to mention to us the dua that should be said when somebody visits the graveyard, okay, the Muslim graveyard, or passes by the graves uh, without the intention of visiting. So the author, he says, وَإِنْ يَقُولَ إِذَا زَارَهَا أَوْ مَرَّ بِهَا The person says, if he visits the grave or passes by the graves, As-salamu alaykum dara qawmin mu'mineen Greetings to you in the Islamic way, O community of believers. وَإِنَّا إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ بِكُمْ لَلَاحِقُونَ And we, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are soon to meet you, to be with you. يَرْحَمُ اللَّهُ الْمُسْتَقْدِمِينَ مِنْكُمْ وَالْمُسْتَأْخِرِينَ May Allah have mercy upon those who came early into this place, the graveyard, and those who came later. نَسْأَلُ اللَّهُ لَنَا وَلَكُمْ الْعَافِيَةِ We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ourselves and for you, afia. Afia is a state of well-being. اللَّهُمَ لَا تَحْرِمْنَا أَجْرَهُمْ Oh Allah, don't forbid us from their reward. وَلَا تَفْتِنَّا بَعْدَهُمْ And don't put us to trial in our faith or in the dunya after their passing away. وَاغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلَهُمْ And forgive us and forgive them. So this dua is, as we mentioned, the dua that you say when you go to the graves, whether visiting the grave or passing by. So the dua is a combination of duas found in Sahih Muslim and also in the uh, Musnad of Imam Ahmad. So the part which is in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, the part which is collected by Imam Ahmad, is the part which says, اللَّهُمَ لَا تَحْرِمْنَا أَجْرَهُمْ O oh Allah, don't prevent us from the reward due to uh, their death. وَلَا تَفْتِنَّا بَعْدَهُمْ And don't put us to, to, to trial after their death. وَاغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلَهُمْ And forgive us and forgive them. So this part of the narration, this part of the dua is found in Ahmad and the other parts of this dua which is combined are found in Sahih Muslim. So in the dua, uh, Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu taught us to say وَإِنَّا إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ لَلَاحِقُونَ and we, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Mashiach of Allah azawajal, are also going to soon be with you. So a question here is, a masala here is, why is the Mashiach, why is the insha'Allah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned with something which we know is going to happen for sure, which is death? Why is there insha'Allah mentioned in this context, in this dua? What can it mean? We know that death is going to be for certain. Why, why do we say insha'Allah? Barakallahu feek. So this is one of the explanations that the ulama give, that inshallah we meet you upon iman, that inshallah we die as Muslims. Another explanation that the ulama they gave is that because uh, this was referring to the graveyard of the companions, al baqi so inshallah we will also die and meet you in Baqi. Okay, these are some of the explanations that the ulama gave to why the Mashiach of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned here. The author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he said, قال المؤلف, the author, he said, وَتُسَنُّ تَعْزِيَةُ الْمُصَابِ بِالْمَيِّدِ It's sunnah to give ta'ziyah, condolences, uh, to the one who is uh, bereaved, to the one whose family has passed away, or loved one has passed away. It's sunnah to give them condolences. And the definition of ta'ziyah is as follows. Ta'ziyah هي تسلية وتقوية للمصاب It is tasliya, which is to put happiness in the soul and heart, of the one who has lost a relative, and to give strength to the one by saying certain words 
to the one who has lost this loved one وَتَخْفِيفْ عَنْهُ وَحَثُّهُ عَلَى صَبْر and to lessen the pain that the person is experiencing and to encourage them to have patience الصَبْر وَرِضَى بِقَضَاءِ وَالْقَدْرِ and to have patience with the decree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated وَالدُّعَى لَهُ وَلِمَيِّتِهِ and to make dua for this person and for the one that has passed away so this is ta'ziyah that in general you say words which lessen the pain and the suffering that the person is going through you encourage them to have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and remind them of the importance of having faith and trust in Allah's decree and his legislation Imam Ibn Qudama rahimahullah ta'ala he said in Al-Mughni, his Encyclopedia of Fiqh, in volume 2, page 212, he said, He said, we don't know of anything, meaning us the fuqaha, us the scholars, we don't know of anything which is legislated specifically that you must say when you give a ta'ziyah, that you must say when you give words uh, of bereavement, words of condolence to the one, uh, to the family that has somebody passed away. Okay, there's nothing exactly specific however we do have authentic narrations in Bukhari Muslim with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, at the death of uh, his uh, niece or nephew I can't remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said inna lillahi ma akhad. verily and certainly to Allah belongs that which was taken okay ma'ata. and to him belonging to him is that which he gave وَكُلٌّ إِنْدَهُ بِأَجْلِ مُسَمَّةٍ And everything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for a prescribed time, meaning that it's only given to you for a prescribed time. فَالْتَصْبِرْ وَالْتَحْتَسِبْ So have patience in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are words which are authentically narrated from the Prophet sallallahu However, if somebody said other than these words, as mentioned by Ibn Qudama and the majority, then there is nothing wrong with saying those words as long as they have the meaning of good condolences. The madhab holds that ta'ziyah, this um, condolences, it shouldn't be for more than three days. Okay, after three days, it's held as being makru. After three days in the madhab, it's held as being makru. That if you give ta'ziyah after three days, and of course, uh, another opinion in the madhab held by Ibn Taymiyyah is that there's no set limit. There's no set limit of the duration of by when you have to or should give ta'ziyah. Uh, the Hanafis, the Shafi'is and the Hanbalis, all of these schools of thought, <coughs> all of these hundreds of scholars, thousands, they held that to visit and to sit for ta'ziyah, to visit the family, and specifically for condolence and to sit with them specifically, is something which is either haram or it's makru. So between them they had the discussion as if it's haram or makru. So the point is that uh, with these scholars, with the Hanbali Madhab and the Hanafis and the Shafis, they held that it's not legislated to go to the residence or a place of gathering uh, with the family uh, of the family that have lost somebody close to them and to give them condolences in that way. Okay? So we have an athar, we have an athar from one of the companions uh, which was authenticated by the, li the likes of Imam Nawawi, Rahimullah Ta'ala, this great hadith scholar and jurist in Al Majmu'. And also Imam Ibn al-Kathir in al-Irshad, <coughs> excuse me. And also Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahumullah ta'ala jami'an. May Allah have mercy upon them all. So the likes of these and others, they authenticated this other from Jarir ibn Abdullah al-Bajali, radiyallahu anhu, who said, Kunna na'ud al-ijtima' ila ahli al-mayyiti wa saniyat al-ta'am ba'da dafnihi min al-niyahati. <coughs> excuse me. He said, we the companions used to consider and hold that a gathering at the household of the dead and giving and for them to prepare food for us was from niyaha, was from that which was a forbidden type of wailing, okay, which the Prophet ﷺ forbade. So uh, based upon this athar, which is held authentic by many of the uh, hadith scholars, uh, the companion radiallahu anhu was saying that we the companions would hold it as something being impermissible that you can't gather at the house or at the place of the family that has passed uh, has somebody passed away and also the ulama they said that if you do this yani, uh, a lot of people gather at the house it increases the sadness in the heart of the one who has somebody loved passed away uh, what should be done is the natural way that the sahaba radiallahu anhum would do so 
as mentioned by Sheikh Uthaymeen Rahimahullah Ta'ala, is that you give ta'ziyah, you give condolences in a natural way. That yani, if, it's, uh, if you have a close relationship with that person, you can phone them, uh, you can go and visit them, or you can, you know, whenever you see them in the shops, whenever you see them in the masajid, then you would say words of condolences to them in a natural way, not by having to gather at their house. <coughs> So we said that the Hanbali Madhab holds it between being makru and haram. Imam Ibn Qudam ta'ala was from those in the Madhab that said that it's permissible for you to go to the person's house and give ta'ziyah as long as there's no haram elements uh, within that gathering. Ta'ziyah, according to the Madhab, it can be before the burial or it can be after the burial. So it doesn't have to be after the burial. The condolences can be, for, be even at the time of the ghusl. Okay, or as soon as it's heard that such and such passed away. The ta'ziyah can be before the burial and it can be after the burial. The madhab doesn't allow the ta'ziyah of a kafir. It doesn't allow you to give condolences to a kafir. Why? Because they say in the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا تَجِدُ قَوْمًا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ يُوَادُونَ مَنْ حَادَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَوْ كَانَ أَبَاءَهُمْ أَوْ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ أَوْ إِخْوَانَهُمْ أَوْ عَشِيرَتَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you will not find a people, you will not find a people who show love, deep love, to those who opposed the message that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came with, who have disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Rasul. Even if they are their parents, even if they are their children or their brothers or their tribes. Okay, so you wouldn't find the people that believe in Allah in the last day behaving in this manner, showing muwadda uh, in that manner. So the Hanbali Madhab, based upon this evidence in the Qur'an and others, they say it's not permissible to give ta'ziyah. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala was from one of the Imams in the Madhub, Madhab who permitted to give ta'ziyah to the Kuffar. As long as there's a maslaha, which is hoped. If there's a maslaha, a positive benefit, which was hoped from giving ta'ziyah to this kafir. For example, you hope that by giving ta'ziyah to this kafir that he may enter into Islam or that any hatred that he has towards Islam and the Muslims would be lessened. Or he's a person of great importance and his support for the Muslim community can be gotten by giving this ta'ziyah. So if one of these maslaha, masalih, is uh, possible to be achieved in Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, it's permissible for the Muslim to give ta'ziyah, condolences, to the non-Muslim in this situation. And he replied to the previous verse that I mentioned. He said that the love mentioned in this verse, لَا تَجِدُ قَوْمًا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ يُوَادُونَ مَنْ حَادَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولَهُ You won't find the people who believe in Allah in the last day having this type of uh, love for those who oppose Allah and His Messenger. He said the love here is pertaining to a love which is particular in the religion. Meaning that if you have the love uh, for the, the verse that I mentioned to show as an evidence that visiting, uh, giving ta'ziyah to the kafir is not allowed. The love there means the love which is in the religion, that you love their religion and you love that their faith is above and stronger than the Islamic faith. That is the love which is impermissible according to Ibn Taymiyyah and others who hold the opinion that you are allowed to give ta'ziyah. And another evidence that they hold is in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لَا يَنْحَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ لَمْ يُقَاتِلُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ أَنْ تَبَرُّهُمْ وَتُقْسِطُوا إِلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't prevent you from those who do not fight you in the religion nor do they take you out from your dwellings okay, due to, based upon your religion, hatred of your religion that you be righteous to them, that you do acts of righteousness and goodness to them, and to barruhum wa tuqsitu ilayhim, and that you be just with them. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are just. So they say that from bir, from doing goodness and righteousness, is giving ta'ziyah. So this is one of the evidences uh, that Ibn Taymiyyah and those who agree with him hold uh, for proving that you can give ta'ziyah to a non-Muslim if there's a maslaha, if there's a benefit in do so, doing so. But as a quick recap, we said that the madhab holds that you are not allowed, not allowed to give ta'ziyah to a non-Muslim. The author, he says, وَيَجُوزُ الْبُكَاءَ عَلَى الْمَيِّتِ And it's permitted for you to cry over the death of the one that you loved or was close to you. It's permitted for you to cry because in Bukhari and Muslim, it's narrated about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that when his son Ibrahim passed away, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he cried. He had tears flowing from his eyes, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Inna He said, verily the, the eye sheds tears. 
والقلب يحزن and the heart feels deep sadness ولا نقول إلا ما يضى ربنا but we do not say except which pleases our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala وَإِنَّ بِفِرَاقِكَ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ لَمَحْزُنُونَ And verily we due to your departing O Ibrahim are very deeply saddened so here clearly in the narration uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he cried. However, he legislated and he taught us that the reality is that we have to control the heart and we shouldn't behave in a way by saying words or doing behavior which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person is allowed to cry. There's nothing wrong with that. However, does crying harm the dead? As some of the ulama, they discussed and they mentioned because in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ الْمَيْتِ لَا يُعَذَّبُ بِبُكَائِلْ Ahlihi, that verily the dead person is punished or harmed due to the crying of his family. So how can it be that the person is punished or harmed due to the crying of his family when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وَزْرَ أُخْرَى that no soul shall bear the burden of another soul, meaning that no soul is going to be punished or harmed due to the actions of another soul. So how do we understand this hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said that the dead is punished due to the crying of the family? Any ideas here? How do we understand the hadith? So from the answers that the ulama they give, uh, may Allah have mercy upon them, they say that the type of crying that's mentioned in the hadith which the family does and the dead person is punished due to that is the type of crying where the people they gather together as many people as they can and they wail and they mourn in a way which is not controlled in a way which is not legislated and not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they say words and they have behavior which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so due to this the person is punished or harmed and it's also the case that maybe the person he knew that his family in general they behave in this way when somebody passes away who is beloved and close to the family. So this person who passed away, before he passed away, he didn't teach his family and he didn't advise them that, look, if I die, you're not to behave in this unlegislated manner by doing, uh, you know, wailing, okay? And uh, nadab, etc. So this is one of the reasons why the person is punished. The author says, وَيَحْرَمُوا النَّدْبُ and it's impermissible to do nad. Nadb is a type of wailing. When yahatu and yahatu also is a type of wailing, which we'll discuss in a minute. Wa shakku thawb. And shakku thawb is also impermissible, which is that a person starts to rip apart their clothing. Of course, doing this at the displeasure of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa latmul khad. And to start slapping oneself in the face, on the cheeks. Wa nahwun. And to behave in such manner. So again, going back to the author, he said, yahrumul nadb. He said, Nadb is impermissible. Nadb is ta'dad mahasan al mayyit ala wajh tasakhat. Okay? Uh, nadb is to remember the dead person, his good attributes, and to start to mention them that, oh, he was such a great person. He used to spend money on the poor. He used to pray all night long. And then you say this in a way which is uh, you're angry and you're upset that he was taken away from you. So you say it with words like, wa. Uh, woe to me, why did this take place? Oh, who's going to uh, you know, provide for us once he's passed away? You say words like that, okay? Words of uh, displeasure with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. This is nadab. Niyaha, uh, the next thing which the author mentioned which is impermissible in the type of wailing, niyaha is rafu sawt bi buka ala al mayyit wa tasakhat ala faraqihi Okay, the, is to uh, raise your voice when you are crying extremely loud, to be very loud when you are crying and uncontrollable. And again, you are doing it in a way which you are not pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're, you're not pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated. And you're showing this through your uncontrollable crying and your uncontrollable shrieking and screaming uh, when you do so. And this is something which is forbidden. And also, uh, the author he mentioned, as we... Uh, said uh, slapping oneself on the cheek and pulling your hair or ripping your clothes or anything of that nature is impermissible because the Prophet ﷺ said in Bukhari and Muslim لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَطَمَ الْخُدُودِ وَشَقَّ الْجُيُوبِ وَدَعَ بِدَعْوَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ That person is not from us, the one that when he has somebody who passes away he starts to slap himself in the face or pulls the hair out or uh, makes uh, statements which were pre-un-Islamic uh, statements of displeasure. 
So really and truly what the author is teaching us and what the Sunnah is teaching us, though it's extremely difficult, we have to remember that the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna lillahi ma akhad wa lahu ma a'ta That to Allah belongs that which he takes, which he took. And to him belongs that which he gave. And as Shaykh Uthameen rahimahullah ta'ala once explained in uh, Riyadh al-Salihin, when he was explaining the meaning, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, verily and truly we belong to Allah, and to him we are going to return. He said, may Allah have mercy upon him, that if it's the case that we belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do with us as he pleases. And we have no right in showing any displeasure towards what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses for us or for, for our beloved. And that is the reality of the situation. Though it's extremely difficult, we are allowed to cry, we are allowed to mourn, but we should control how we cry. We should control the words that we say and we should try to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are pleased with his decree and that we understand the reality of the journey of this life and that it's all going to end in the same way no matter how long we live how we live whether we're happy rich poor how long we live for we're all going to end in the same way which is ending up in the ground but we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of our sins through his mercy and to give us an end which is pleasing to him subhanahu wa ta'ala so by this by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we come to the end of Kitab al the book of uh, funeral rites and it was only with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the many mistakes that were there were from, were from myself and shaitan anything which, which was were correct and of benefit was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah next week will be a break and then after that we will, ju- we will start doing the book of zakah with Allah's permission so if you have any questions on today's topic that we took uh, feel free to ask and if you don't want to ask you can send a message if you wish to do so on the fit group or privately, privately to me وجزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم